know we're shit. Yeah. Thanks for watching the Daily Drift. Alright guys, so it's the next day obviously. This is the last day that I got to get this thing done. So I got to work on getting this thing finished up. We're going to start by assembling these pistons over here and the rods. Um, and I'm just going to show you how to do that. And then we'll work on actually putting them into the engine. So we're getting there slowly but surely, but we're getting there. So let's get to it. All right, guys. So I got everything lined up here. Uh, this here is the, uh, the Manly connecting rod. So it's manly, so obviously it belongs in a Miata, of course. Uh, but the thing is with these rods, they're forged, um, so they're going to be super strong, especially dealing with, because we're going to be turbo in the car. I mean, it's already turbo, but if we ever want to up the boost and stuff, we got that. You're going to have your wrist pin here and the piston. This is a Wiseco piston. So, so if you're not familiar with the Wiseco piston, basically it's all forged, so that's why it's got this dish in it here. And what that does is it helps lower the compression. Um, it's basically going to make it a little bit more forgiving for all the boost. And it's got these little flutes here. You can see these little holes, right? And all that is to allow the uh, gas and oil to go past the rings. This is where your oil ring is going to go. It's just something that they add in there that's really helpful. And I might be getting this wrong, so if I am, please feel free to correct me. But it's also got this nice coating that they put on the side skirts on these pistons. Because this is designed to ride up against the cylinder wall. You don't want it contacting, but it will every now and again, but this is going to help it glide a lot smoother, um, and it's just going to help protect it and make it last longer. Now, these things are really, really strong, and it's going to last a really, really long time. And so, here we have the uh, manly, uh, <laughs> the manly rod, which, of course, belongs in a Miata because they're oh so manly. Um, but what you can see here is it's, it comes with some ARP fasteners. Um, and they come out the box, they're weighted and everything like that. They're very good, but the one thing is you got to be very, very careful with is when you take these end caps off. You can't just go and crank them off like this because you could potentially twist it. I'll show you how to take that apart in a minute, but we got to be very, very careful with these because we don't want to bend them or anything like that. So let's get to installing them. Okay, guys, so here's the trick. Now, they sell vices for these things for connecting rods. They sell... They're connecting rod vices, but they're about a hundred dollars. And honestly, you don't need them if you have a regular old bench vise. So there's a few things you got to take into consideration here. So first off, this is a very strong metal, but you don't want to risk twisting it. So you don't want this getting bent. So if you go to do this, you're putting a lot of torquing forces on these that you don't want to do because we don't want to ruin our brand new connecting rods. So what I've got here set up is in the vise I've got wood. This steel is not going to get hurt by wood. So we're going to clamp it in there very carefully against the faces. So on here you have the faces of the connecting rod. And that is what we're putting up into the bench vise. Okay. That's where we want to secure this thing because that's what's going to make sure that it's nice and safe. And that we're not damaging anything. You just need to get it as good on that face as possible. Because I can still get a socket in there. I know this is kind of, kind of ghetto, but you know what? When you're trying to save money... Because you just spent a lot of money on parts. Sometimes that's what you gotta do. Alright, so we got it on there. You can see it's the ARP 2000s. They're good. Um, so yeah, so now we'll go ahead and pop that off. Well guys, this is interesting. Evidently, they ship them already loose because I didn't have to loosen it at all. So, there's a little tip for you. So I guess uh, if you're ever looking for a cheap connecting rod vice, that's how you do it. But uh, I didn't need to. Go figure. All right, so assembly is very, very simple. Um, you just want to make sure it's super clean. We're going to spray all these parts off, uh, make sure that they're nice and clean, and then we're going to lube them up real good with some uh, Hulk jizz <laughs> or assembly lube, whatever you want to call it. So uh, we'll take the assembly lube, and we'll pop that on there, lube all this stuff up, put it together real easy. All right, so... What we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble the top portion first. Uh, it's really straightforward, really simple. All you gotta do, take your lube, lube this thing up real good. Don't be afraid to get in there. Go in there with some assembly lube. And just lube it up real good. Okay, you wanna make sure it's nice and lubed up. Should be pretty good. You can see in there it's nice and lubed. All right, so then the next thing Take your piston, and then you're gonna lube up in there. 
try to get up all the spots where there's going to be contact. Um, some people use motor oil, but I prefer using assembly lube. It's real slick. You don't have to worry about it. Um, you will have to change your oil after, but it's really good for, uh, you know, pre-assembly. And also, if you're going to put the engine together and it's not going to be running for a little while, it's good for that, too. So, now that we've got that all nice and lubed up inside there, all we're going to do is take this, slide this in here, and then as that's in there, we're going to take our wrist pin, and we're just going to lube it up real good, like real real good oh shit that's a big ol wasp holy crap no sir not today motherfucker who what the fucking fuck was that whoo that thing was monstrous jesus christ that motherfucker was trying to kill me sorry guys i, I don't do well with wasps i've been stung by them bitches a lot all right so we're gonna slide this through here and it might be a little stiff, but it's because it's precision. It's pre very, very precise. You're gonna see there's gonna be a lot of excess. This is gonna be just you're just gonna have to work it in there. It should slide right through. Okay, so now you can see it's in there. It's all nice and luby lubed. Look, you can even see it's coming out of the uh, oil hole inside there. So that's good. That means that we've definitely got uh, definitely got good good amount of grease in there. That's for damn sure. All right, so now comes the part that really, really, really sucks. Spiral locks. These little bad boys right here, these are a pain in the butt. So the easiest way that I found to do this is you put the two pointed ends in the piston first and then work the rest in. Um, it's going to be a pain. But you want to be very careful here not to scratch the piston. You do not want to scratch the piston. If you look in there, you can see there's a little groove. And that groove is where this lock goes. Okay, almost got it. Oh, there we go. So when you're looking at this, you wanna make sure that the openings to the pin are either on the bottom or the top. So we're gonna have to rotate it a little bit to get it to face that direction, um, but then it should be good. Just be very careful not to use like any really sharp tools or like anything that could really like scratch your piston or anything like that. I use my fingers. Uh, but to rotate this, I'm going to have to use like a little pick or something, but very, very carefully. All right. So now you can see in there, that's the gap set all the way to the bottom. So it should be good. Now I'm just going to go and do this on the rest of the cylinders. So we got four more to do, or three more. We'll finish these up, and then we'll move on to installing them. Alright guys, so the next step is we got to take these caps off. Um, one thing that's cool that I noticed from these guys, they already marked each rod so we know what's the end cap and bottom, but I'm only going to do these one at a time because I don't want to risk, you know, if I go and I take these all apart and then I mix up the caps, I mean, they're marked, whatever, I'm just doing it one at a time. I'd rather do it that way, play it safe, and yeah, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to pop these off, we're going to put the new bearings on. Um, and then we're going to check the clearances and make sure everything's good with that. And then after that, also we'll install the uh, piston rings. So let's do it. Okay, so here's the trick. So all you got to do, same thing with the other ones, just undo these cap bolts. And then you just take it apart. There we go. So now what we'll do is we'll just install the bearings onto this. Oh no! God, that's not good. Shit, I just dropped one. Yeah, don't do what I just did there. That's very bad. Okay, so it seems to be okay. Um, I was worried about that, but... So, rod bearings are a lot like main bearings. Uh, they're very similar. They go in, they each have these little t these little tabs here. So when you're looking there, that's that little tab or tang. It's basically just a locator, and they'll have markings on the back that'll tell you, you know, what size bearing it is. We'll take these bearings, clean them up real good, and then we'll put them into the uh, rod. And then we'll do the uh, cap, and then that's all there is to it. So now we got both bearings in and we're going to take the number one piston and then we'll put the rings on and then we'll just repeat this process for each one okay 
I totally screwed up here and I forgot to turn on the microphone. So you get to watch me act like an idiot. But <laughs> don't forget, basically all I'm doing is I'm going to show you guys that you need to use a piston ring tool to expand the rings so that way they don't get bent or twisted or screwed up or anything like that. You just got to be really careful and use these things to open it up. It opens it up real carefully and it makes it real easy to slide the rings on over the piston so you don't break them. That's basically all that they do. Okay, so the order that we need to do this in is we need to do the oil rings, which is the scrunchy rings. Then we need to do the second ring and then the top ring last. Otherwise, you're just going to have a pain in the butt trying to put these things on. Okay, so the first ring we're going to work on is going to be the oil ring. And it's this thing that looks like a little scrunchy, basically. The oil ring consists of the scrunchy looking thing and two shiny thin rings. Each of these rings, one goes below the scrunchy and one goes above the scrunchy. And you're going to have two ends that butt up against each other. If you look here, you can see where they are and they form just an odd shape. But that's what you need to keep track of when we come to positioning the rings into the right place. Okay, so each of the rings is going to have a marking on them. The marking on these particular rings is an N and that indicates that that needs to face up. This is the second ring. So the second ring is almost like a carbon color. The top ring also has an N on the top to indicate which side goes up, uh, but the top ring is very shiny and metallic looking when you look at it. It doesn't look like the second ring. So guys, now what I'm gonna show you is these pistons have a relief cut into them. There's a large relief, which is for the intake side, and the small relief, which is for the exhaust side. It's all gonna be in relation to where the front of the engine is, but basically, if you know what side of the head your exhaust is on, and you know what side the intake is, put the large reliefs towards the intake side and the small reliefs towards the exhaust side. It's that simple. Okay, so here's an example of where the oil expander ring goes. It's a little scrunchy thing. Where they butt up goes to the front of the piston. And then when you rotate it around, the bottom ring goes to the left. I put it on the flute and the top ring to the right flute. That's on the opposite side. The top ring is facing up there while the second ring is on the back side, basically opposite. And just remember, when you're looking at this, reference the chart to make sure that you're looking from the front of the engine. All right, guys, so I just got back from the parts store, and uh, I got one of these. It's a Leslie, whatever, it's 19500 ring compressor, but this is like the old school ones. I used one of these when I did the RX-7, and I think this one will work. The Summit one I got, it's just like, it compresses, but it's just not compressing enough. I don't know if it's that my block isn't exactly the right dimension or if that compressor is the wrong size. I don't know, but uh, we're gonna have to, this is basically useless. I'm sure that it would have worked if it was the right size, but this one's not. So instead we're gonna use this one and hopefully we can get these pistons in here. So I'm running out of time. I got a lot to get done in a short amount of time. We're still good, make sure we got all our stuff lined up here. We're still good. And now I'm going to take this very carefully, slide it over the piston, and then I'm going to compress it. <laughs> okay, so I got them compressed finally. That took a hell of a lot longer than I thought it would. So I got this set up, intake valves on the intake side, exhaust to the exhaust side, and we're just going to very carefully drop this in here, and then we're going to set that right there. And then now what we need to do is we're going to take our hammer using a dead blow hammer and we're just lightly tap it into place, okay? Just gonna slowly work it in there. Just very carefully because we don't want to pop the, the rings out at the wrong time. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. And we're in. Alright, so that one worked. We got our pistons in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up on the block. Uh, and basically we're just going to check to make sure that when it goes to connect to the crankshaft that it's not going to hit it or scratch it or anything because we still need to take some measurement. So I'm going to flip this and we're going to do the plastic gauge on it. So completely dry, no lube, no lube. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then we'll take our measurements, see what we get, pop it off, lube it back up. And then we'll repeat for all of them. So let's do it. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm slowly pushing this down, very, very slowly. Make sure that we don't have any oil in this journal. 
as I add a bunch of lint to it, because I'm an idiot, but that's okay. Okay, so what we're doing here, first I'm gonna make sure that this is completely clean, okay? We're gonna line this sucker up, and we're gonna very carefully push the piston up to it. Okay, so very, very carefully. It's completely dry, okay? I'm just gonna slowly work it on there. Alright, okay, so now that we have it on there, we just wanna leave it just like that. Don't turn the crank, don't move the rod, just leave it right where it is. And we're gonna put the cap on with the plastic gauge and see what we get. Plasti, plasti, plasti gauge. All right, so we're just gonna lay our plastic gauge on there, just a nice little strip, and then we'll tighten it down. Okay, so a very important thing is to note, there's gonna be one side that's marked with uh, numbers, but you wanna make sure that that side matches the side that has numbers on the actual uh, crank. So this side here, no number, so this side, no number, this side has a number, and this side has a number, so we know that that's good. So now I'm just gonna set this in here very carefully. I'm just gonna work it onto the rod. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna run our bolts through. These bolts, we wanna make sure they're coated in oil all the way from the threads to the heads. Wow, from the threads to the heads, I like that. And then I'm just gonna tighten them down alternating. So we're gonna do once, just like a little bit and a little bit, and we're just gonna go slow, okay? So we're not gonna go crazy here. We have gotta be careful as we do this. Okay, so normally, whenever you're doing this, before you assemble these, before you torque them, you gotta measure the, the stretch on the bolt. That would probably be something that I should do. I don't have the tool that it takes to do that, but I'm fairly confident these are fine. They're ARPs and they're brand new, so I'm not too entirely worried. If I were reusing these bolts, I would definitely check them. But we're just gonna send it the way it is. So now we're gonna torque it down according to the book. It's about, we're gonna go to 55. We're not gonna go the full thing. We're gonna do just like a little bit at a time. A little bit each way till we get there. Good. Good. Okay, now we'll take them off and then take a look at what we got. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take these off now that they're loose. Now normally this would be the point where you would go and measure the stretch on the bolt based off of what you did before you torqued them. I'm not doing that. I should, but I'm not because I don't have the tool. So, and we'll pull this cap off, which might be kind of hard because it's, uh, on the crankshaft but be very careful because remember we don't have any oil in here and we don't want it to turn or mess anything up okay so after about an hour on the struggle bus i managed to get this thing off holy crap this is a pain in the dick but anyway so now we're going to measure that okay so now what we're going to look at is the clearance and it would appear as though at the widest point it's about 15 thousandths it's a little bit tight so that's actually almost a little too tight for what we want. Boy, that's that's a tough one. Because if it's too tight, we might have an issue. But it could have been from when I was taking this apart. I'm gonna measure the inside of this one too. Okay, so guys, here's the deal. So I looked it up and on the field service manual, basically what it's saying is we can do this because the specs are, well here, let me. So I gone through and I checked this stuff out and we got 15 thousandths around there and according to this the clearance that we can do connecting rod oil clearance is between uh it's between 11 thousandths and 27 thousandths we're we're good as far as that goes so we're more towards the minimum side but we're not towards the max so we're going to say that it's good so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go down and uh i'm going to go through each and every one of these and basically redo what i just did i'm going to put some oil on the one that we finished and torque it down since it's done so after I oil that one up and torque it down, then I'm gonna start going on the other ones. And uh, I don't know, we'll just get that done and then we'll move on to the next thing. So enjoy this nice little time lapse.
So guys, that's uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So at least for the bottom half of the engine. So I went and I checked all the clearances. They were a little bit tight, okay? Now, according to the fuel service manual, we're within, within specs. The very last one was about 10 thousandths, which is really, really small. Um, it should be closer to 2 thousandths, I mean 20 thousandths. Um, but it's not, it's closer to 10, but it's still within the specs of what's ex acceptable. And then the rest were 15 thousandths across the board. So all in all, not bad, a little tight in the back, but that could have been, you know, user error. It may have slid a little bit, or maybe the, uh, you know, plastic dip's one of those things when it's hot and humid, sometimes it expands. First when it's cold, it might shrink, so you might get different readings. And right now it's about 100 degrees with a shitload of humidity. If you can't tell, I've been sweating my ass off. So we got all the pistons in here. Everything's looking good. <laughs> I'm dying thanks to these allergies. The pistons are looking good, everything's in there properly, we got everything set up. So as far as the bottom half of the motor is concerned, it's pretty much done. I just need to put the oil pan on so we can protect the crank. Um, and then after we do that, we'll move on to doing the head. So doing the head is pretty straightforward, pretty simple. It's just like any other head. I mean, you've seen us assemble it before, so I'm going to try to knock this out as fast as I can because the thing is, Austin's back tomorrow afternoon, and I've got all of today and a little bit of tomorrow morning to finish this. So I'm going to try to get this thing at least assembled to the point that we have the intake and everything. So it's like a presentable motor. Whether or not we have the front half on or not, we'll see. So we're just going to get what we can done, and uh, I really hope the surprise works out. So Austin, I really hope you appreciate this. Okay guys, so now i got this thing all set up. We're going to put the uh, oil pump on. We're just reusing the stock one. We didn't have any leaks or any problems before with oil pressure. So we're just going to put the OEM one on. We could upgrade, replace, all that stuff, but they are really expensive. So we're just going to reuse the one that we got um, and just plop it on here. So I'm going to go do that right now. Okay guys, so I got this on here, uh, first things first, you don't have to do this, but I like doing this just because it's like a good thing, good habit to get into, is I'm going to pour this into the oil pump body just to kind of prime it, so that way it would be better for startup, I'm doing this before I do the actual, there we go, it's a little extra, oh well, uh, but that'll help prime that body when we first start it up, now I just need to make sure I clean the surface again, where it's going to be mounting to. That's just to help with initial startup. Okay, and now we'll take the baffle. I've already cleaned all this down with a uh, brake cleaner. I've made sure the surface is perfectly clean because now we're gonna lay down the uh, baffle and then we'll lay down the other part. So with the baffle, what I've done is, you can see I've laid it to the inner portion, okay, inside of the bolts. And now I'm just gonna place this very carefully. Okay, we'll run the bolts through here. These are 70 to 90 uh, some inch pounds, but we're gonna go with 80 and just play it safe. And you could probably get away with the gluten tight method on this, but I just don't feel like risking it. There's that. Alright, good. So now. I'm going to get the pan and get these things on here. So let's get these seals next. Okay, so our rear main seal was good. Uh, we actually just recently replaced it, so we're going to reuse it. Pretty simple. You just want to make sure that this part of the crank is lubed up. So I'm going to actually put some assembly lube on there. Just a little extra slick. Give us a little bit of extra protection. Take this sucker on here. And then we'll just run our four bolts in there. Do this the old-fashioned way. 
So now all I'm doing is I'm going to take these seals. I got one for the rear main and then one for the front. I'm going to apply a small amount of silicone under the seal just to make it uh, basically adhere a little bit better. Nothing too crazy, just enough to basically get it to stick and make it tacky. And then I'm going to take this, set it in place. I should hold that seal in place. Same thing on this one. And then we're going to set this in the back. So all I'm doing is just lining up these notches here. And it's just going to make it to where these things are in the correct place because they're just little notches. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm going to get ready to start laying down the solid bead for the oil pan. Okay, I got my bead. So I laid it on a little bit thick. You may not want to do it that thick uh, while trying to avoid any passages or any uh, cooling spots. I'm trying to be really careful here. Hopefully I don't screw anything up. I usually do, but uh, hopefully today it'll be a different story. So let's get this oil pan on. I've already cleaned all the surfaces really well, as you guys saw earlier. So now we're just gonna go ahead and put this on and just be extremely careful here. This is super important. This is muy importante. Okay, so now before I press down or anything, I want to get my oil pan bolts and bolt those in. Let's pop these suckers on here. Okay, and then now, after I get all these bolts in, then we gotta torque everything down. All right guys, so we're getting a little bit closer here. Uh, basically, I got all the oil pan bolts on. It's still tacky, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just slowly go from the inside and work my way out, so very slowly from the center, and we're gonna spread out. Uh, it says 52 to 69 inch pounds, so we're just going to go 60 and call it good. So I'm just going to start here and work my way around it. Looks like I may have used too much uh, of the uh, silicone stuff because it is just creeping out. All right, so that should be good. Now I'm gonna just wipe this excess away from here because I definitely put too much silicone. You can see where there's just like way too much of this stuff. So I'm gonna just wipe it. It's just not necessary to have all this excess. So I'm just gonna wipe it, make it a little bit cleaner. All right guys, we're getting down to the wire here. Getting really close to getting this thing finished. So now that we got the oil pan on, uh, basically we can start focusing on the top end now that we're Certain that the bottom end's looking pretty good. We got all the stuff in there that we want. Um, so the bottom half of the motor, that's pretty much it as far as that goes. Uh, the rest is now just getting the top half taken care of, which is gonna be doing the head and everything like that. Man, it's getting really close. So the next thing that we gotta do is we gotta work on getting this head on. We got the cylinder head here, we got it all nice and cleaned up. Uh, on the underside of it, we had like three valves replaced. You can see the really shiny, nice looking ones. Uh, those are the new ones, and then we had the older, like, beat-up ones. They're okay, and everything else, it's, like, super clean. This thing was vac cleaned, like, the whole nine yards. It's, it's super clean. So the next thing that we need to do, now that we've got the head resurfaced and everything like that, is i got to get the head gasket, spray it with some copper, and then we're going to lay it down on top of here and get the head put on. That's uh, the next goal. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just keep moving forward, keep this ball rolling, because... Ooh, I'm running out of time. So we're gonna surprise him. I'm sitting in the garage. I think I might have just heard him pull up. But when he pulls up, I'm gonna open the garage and see if we can get his reaction. So, so let's see if we can surprise him. I think he sees us. Welcome back. <laughs> 